It's match number 15 from IPL 2022, and it is, of course, going to be another compelling watch. And I'm talking about Lucknow Super Giants, of course, and they'll be facing the Delhi Capitals. You want to watch this match review for many reasons. I'll tell you more. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, reason number one is because you've got Professor Graham Smith. I'm saying professors because he, of course, is in a university right now doing a lecture too. Graham Smith, how are you this afternoon? Uh, it's been a long morning of lectures, so I'm uh, happy for the break. Thank you. Come and speak to you guys. Super. I mean, we have to, of course, pick the bones about LSG versus DC. And it looks like a brilliant game on paper, but even in reality, it promises to be a cracking affair. Let's get straight into it by asking you about the Lucknow Super Giants, of course. Now, they lost the first match, but they bounced back superbly. Won while, of course, chasing against CSK and then the defending one against Gujarat Times. What do they look better in doing, Grant Smith, according to you? Uh, it, it's such a difficult one to, to actually answer. I mean, I, I look at them, they're, they're a pretty balanced team. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of outstanding players, but, you know, um, uh, especially in their bowling attack, you don't see, you know, out-and-out -out superstars with the ball. You know, you've got really solid performing individuals, players that you know consistently are probably going to step up uh, for you. Um, I think the other factor that comes into it is the due factor. I mean, we've seen that that, that probably uh, will play a role, uh, and how they're prepared for that is going to be key. Um, but when I look at their lineup, I think they've got more power uh, and more capabilities in their in their batting. So I, I would say that they'd probably look to chase. Yeah, I mean, Aish Badoni, of course, putting out the final touches in that chase against CSK. But like you said, they have an absolutely explosive gun batting lineup there. Let's speak about who they're going to face in this one, which is the Delhi Capitals. Because remember, Smithy, they won the toss on two occasions. They've opted a field uh, and it's not gone down so well chasing with... David Warner returning to the side and potentially Andrik Nokia. Do you think they can take a gamble by batting first? I, I think, considering the due facts, I think we, we mentioned it last night, I think all the captains are going to look to chase unless the, the, the surface itself looks like it's going to get it as dry as possible if the game goes on. So I expect them to chase. But I think now they've got more options. We spoke about them needing to get some of the international players fit and, and available for selection. And David Warner it comes with a wealth of experience. I mean, his T20 World Cup performance... You know, we'll be bringing him a lot of confidence. I think he was man of the series in, 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 in Dubai, Abu Dhabi and Sharjah. Um, so that'll be a huge tick for Ricky Ponting and, uh, and, uh, and Pant. Um, you know, Nokia for me is, is still a little bit of a lottery. As I said, he's come off a big injury, hasn't played any cricket since the World Cup in the UAE. Um, but they might take a longer term view on him. You know, they want someone like Nokia to get game time, to get better and better and better. And maybe in preparation, he's bowled superbly, he's looking fit, he's looking healthy. But he's a man for them that can make a big impact. He bowls quick, um, when confident, can pick up big wickets for them. So they'll want to get him into this competition as quickly as possible. Right. Now, Delhi Capitals in their first encounter against Mumbai Indians played two overseas players, Smithy. Then they went on to play three against the Gujarat Titans. Will they play four this time? Because surely, if David Warner is fit and daring to go, he starts... I think if you've got Nokia and you've got David Warner fit and rearing to go, you, you it's a no-brainer. You, you pick them. You go for it. I mean, they're match winners and they're right. They're going to win you a game probably single-handedly in this tournament uh, if, they, if they play to their potential. Um, you know, it adds impact, impactful players into your lineup. And I think that's in T20 is, is hugely important. So for me, no-brainer. I've got uh, Warner in for Seifert and I've got Nokia if 100% fit in for Khalil Ahmed. All right, because it's food for thought. Khalil Ahmad actually did pretty well in his last outing, two for 34. And then Musa Fazur was sensational as well, three for 23. So would they add more spinners going ahead when the pitches kind of wear out and hold to their, their, their pace strategy right now? I think they've got a nice balanced attack. You know, if you add the pace of Nokia, I mean, that's probably the one element that's missing. I mean, you've got left armers, you've got two great spin options in Akshay Patel and, and Kuldit Yadav. Um, and, and you've got a you know Takur who's, who's, who's brilliant to get the you know so I think they've got with Nokia back they've, they've got a pretty much nice balanced attack and, and lots of options for Rishabh Pant to use. All right, let's see how that of course unfolds in due course of time. But I want to talk about David Warner and greater depth. I mean a new franchise for him, a new start. Now a couple of questions come to mind, Graham Smith. Now. What are the real expectations they will have of David Warner from a franchise perspective? And two, how will Ricky Ponting use his fellow compatriot in this mix? Yeah, I think we know that David Warner is not the easiest character. I mean, if you can get him right, if you can get him in the right frame of mind, 
uh, and keep him motivated. I mean, he can be a huge asset. Uh, we, we saw that at the SRH. You know, he, he had years where he led, he batted superbly, and then things kind of wobbled and, and fell apart. So I think Ricky Ponting will know him well. He'll know how to get the best out of him. He's worked with him for Australia. Um, and, and, and he'll have a very good, clear mindset of, of how to use David Warner and how to, to get the most out of him. I think we saw that at the T20 World Cup that David Warner still got lots of ability. He's destructive. Um, and when I'm looking at this lineup, you know, him and Prithvi Shaw at the top uh, really can take a lot of pressure off the likes of Rishabh Pant to allow him to go and play his, his natural game. So I think he's in. I think uh, Ponting will back him. He'll get behind him and he'll give him all the, the right tools to, to be successful in this competition. All right, let's of course talk about the Lucknow Super Giants then and their captain in particular because a lot of people on Twitter and pundits alike were kind of criticizing KL for his approach the other night. He ended up with a, what, 51 ball, 68. How do you think he should kind of go about his business in this new team as a captain? We saw that last time with Punjab. What's your take on it, Smithy? Look, I just think he's a class player. I mean, I think because he's got so much talent and so much ball striking ability, he can score all around the park. I think when he does get going, people kind of expect him to, to always be this dynamic, explosive player. But I think the, the thing that I've noticed in the, in the IPL and maybe slightly for India when he has captain is that you know, responsibility of, of the leadership does impact him. He, you know, he, he considers that and he, and, he, and he brings it into the way that he plays. Um, so I think, you know, for him, we're going to see a, 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 a varied KL role through the tournament. Uh, a new franchise, a lot of pressure of leading a new franchise, a lot of pressure of you know needing to deliver those first couple of wins, which now they've done. So they'll be feeling a lot more relaxed. They'll be feeling more confident. The monkey kind of is off their back. They're into the tournament. They've, you know, as you say, the, the, the data and, and all the spreadsheets now have those six of those victories behind them. So, you know, I, I, hopefully he'll relax. And, and, and as I said to you, the same about Rishabh Pant. He needs people around him to perform well. If, if he starts to feel the confidence that you know, the Quinton de Cox, that the Manish Pandys find some form, you know, Evan Lewis is, is at his destructive best consistently, then I think you'll see Kyle relax and play with more freedom. Yeah, so just quickly on that, do you see him more as an aggressor or as an anchor? Which are the roles which will suit him better with the batsman that you mentioned around him? I, I think he, I think he's good enough to read the game. I, I don't think he, he has to come out with a specific mindset. You know, if, 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 if they lose early wickets and he can anchor, he can hold the innings together, he can then you know, pick his moment to be powerful. But if the wicket's flat and, and he can really take advantage of it, a good opening partnership, he has... See, that's the nice thing about having a KL role, is that he's got the cricket smarts, he's got the skills to be able to play both roles for your environment. Yeah, let's talk about his fellow Karnataka man in Manish Pandey. Three low scores and he's batting in a pivotal position, some would say. Is it time to panic from Gautam Gambhir and company or do you think they'll give an uh, experienced player like Pandey a longer rope? I, I think they should give him a longer rope. Uh, um, you know, uh, he's the type of player that you hope will click and find form and... You know, I, I'm always reluctant in having watched the IPL and played in it to chop and change every game. You know, it certainly can become a trend. Um, but make decisions for a good reason. And you know, I would like to see them back Pandy uh, 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 and, and hope that he finds the form. I mean, we know he's a classy player. Um, you know, give him a couple more games and, and hopefully he'll come right because if he does, it's going to make the team better uh, and that's what you want. Yeah, and all the fantasy teams as well better because in cricket.com you guys can check it out in terms of all the stats and data from that regard. Finally, to just wrap up this match review with Graham Smith, predictions time because a lot of your fans have been complimenting you in the comments below saying that he's getting absolutely everything right so we're eagerly listening right now. You went against <laughs> Delhi last time and you of course went for LSG the last time out so what is it going to be is it going to be lsg or dc smithy oh you know i lost my first one uh well, to your team rcb so uh, <laughs> I, I didn't want to bring that in <laughs> need to need to get back on the winning notes um i i think that with the changes of warner coming back and potentially nokia coming back this daily team is starting to look like a, a well-rounded environment um you know, we need, always need a bit of luck in RPL to go your way, whether it's the toss, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a moment here or there. But I'm going to back Delhi Capitals this evening uh, to get on, on the victory board. All right, let's see how it all unfolds. It comes from, of course, the Divac Partle Stadium, where it's usually high scoring. So we can hope for that from a neutral perspective. Catch it all on cricket.com and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon because we have some fantastic insights like you just heard from Graham Smith.